Hello everyone, welcome to the EWSE Finale Ligari, the final EWSE 2022. Ten years in Finale Ligari marked with this one. Titles will be decided today and we have the interesting unknown factor of the Enduro World Series stars coming to play as well. It promises to be an absolute classic. Free loops as ever then in EWSE, some 65 kilometres to race and two and a half thousand metres off descending. The first loop starts with the first power stage of the day. The second power stage of the day doesn't arrive until stage six. And then it is a full chat sprint back towards the town itself where we will be handing out some hardware. Finale Ligari is right at the forefront of e-bike trail creation and as such represents one of the most finely crafted yet challenging courses in EWSE history. The racers left the world famous Piazza di Canoni early and headed out into the hills to take on Finale Ligari at its very best. The first stage of the first loop was the opening power stage of the day which was then followed by three downhill tests. All the pre-race build-up had been on Yannick Pontal and Flo Espinera closing in on their respective titles. The Chileans' big rival Laura Charles had opted not to race in Italy, but a win in finale always counts for that something more. Pontal had to keep Andrea Garibo racing at home at arm's length, but they both started the opening loop slowly, just inside the top 20, whilst Frenchman Levi Batista took an early lead. Espanera was second on the stage behind UCI e-bike world champ Nicole Gouldy, who took the win by a chunky 10 seconds. Former EWS overall title winner Tracy Mosley was in the top five for most of the morning stages. She was second on the second stage too, this time Hattie Harnden, racing on only her second ever day of e-bike ownership, took the win. But Arbea's Espanera would have control of the race by the end of the first loop. feeling good on the bike so I just want to make it through the day and be in the beach just enjoying myself. <laughs> Richie Rood had stunned even his own Yeti Shimano EP racing team by boasting serious pace during practice. He was sixth on the second stage and would take his debut EWSE stage win on the third stage, then immediately back it up with his second on stage four. By the end of the loop, the double EWS champ led the way. Uh, pretty good actually. Like, um, I don't know, I always like the riding here in Finale. And then um, I really like riding our e-bike. It's a good combo, I feel like. Made up the power stage, that was my goal. And then just having fun kind of attacking the trails and it seems to be doing quite well for me. So pretty happy. So after loop one then flew, Espanera led the way by 21 seconds ahead of Harry Harnden with Sophia Wiedenroth, the winner of the previous round, 28 seconds back. Behind them again, it was the British pairing of Mosley and Winton rounding out the top five. Richie Root had taken the EWSE racing like a particularly large duck to water and led the way in the pro men's. 
The winner of round one, Edgar Carballo Gonzalez, was in second place by 5.7 seconds. Paulie's Lee Johnson was third, and Yannick Pontal, the championship leader, was ninth. After a recharge and a visit to the tech zone, the racers headed out for the second loop, which consisted of a further four stages, including the second par stage of the day. Yeah, I like this stuff. I like the point and shoot in bits and pieces, and I like the trails where we have to manhandle the e-bike a little bit more. To be honest, it feels like I've been riding like this all year, but just course just hasn't suited me, and when it goes uphill so much, there's only so much you can do when you're over 80 kilos. Tracy Mosley won the opening stage of Loop 2, narrowly leading home her protégé, Hattie Harnden. The march of the Enduro World Series regulars continued on Loop 2. Carballo Gonzalez led Adrian Day and Kevin McHale home on the first stage. Legendary finale trail builder Evo Camilli designed the second power stage of the race and it was predictably savage as a result. Andrea Garibo finished the stage in fourth. It was won by specialised Francesco Camuan, who edged Levi Batista home by just a tenth of a second. <laughs> Harry Harnden had been down but wasn't out. The Brit won the final two stages of the second loop, heading home Mosley and Espanera respectively. Uh, it's definitely very different to the normal EWS. Yeah, you just got to manage the power stages like really carefully. I made quite a lot of mistakes, so it's easy to get like caught up and frustrated with it. But bigger picture, like it's a long day, and there's what like ten other stages to think about as well. So you can make up your time, and it kind of levels off, I think, at the end of the day. Antoine Roche had had a disappointing start to the race, but took a stage win by just over a second from Adrian Day to round out the loop. Richie Rood was keeping the pressure on at the front. He won on stage seven ahead of Giant Factory Racing's Josh Carlson. Top 10, it's really tight. Maybe tighter than normal bike, normal uh, yeah, classic bike. I think we have a good bike, so that helps. And I'm quite light, so for the fourth stage, I'm okay. By the end of the second loop, it was Day, though, who was up into second place on the road behind the American. Portugal's Thiago Ladeira was in third, having stationed himself inside the top ten for most of the day. In the pro women's race, that brace of wins from Harnden saw her in second, 24 seconds back of Espanera, who was looking like the perfect blend of speed and consistency. Mosley continued to fend off Sofia Wiedenrot for third. The third and final loop of 2022 featured four more stages, including a rerun of the second power stage as the penultimate test on stage 10. The race to the sea was on, and it could have only one winner. Harnden lopped four seconds off of Espanera's lead to get the loop started, but a disappointing par stage would hand Espanera back some breathing space. Flo was heading for the title in some style.
Tracy Mosley had only dropped outside of the top five on the stages once all day and had cemented herself onto the podium in third as a result. Specialised Cheche Kamwan and Levi Batista clocked exactly the same time on the final power stage of the day for the win. Sophia Wiedenrott made it three different power stage winners for the day in the pro women's field. Adrian Day won the first stage of loop three. Right as the race was reaching the very sharp end, he was now just three tenths of a second behind Rude. The hammer blow came on stage ten. The Frenchman went nine seconds faster than the American to move into the lead with only two stages remaining. Kevin McHale would grab a pair of top threes on the final stages to give him a fourth place in the overall. The big news was happening up the road. Day put Rude to the sword with a win on the final stage, with a victory right when the Yeti rider lost seven seconds. Richie Rude had been hugely impressive all day long, but Thiago Ladeira had been waiting for his chance. The Portuguese leapfrogged him on the very last stage to take second place. Adrian Day's first ever EWS E-win was more than well deserved. The Frenchman had gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best all day long and used a brilliant balance of climbing prowess and downhill speed to fend them all off. Good afternoon. Um, I told you I prefer the second loop. We do twice. The result was uh, a bit better following and uh, I keep pushing. Even on the poor stage it was hard, but yeah, I keep pushing and uh, I won. It's good. <laughs> Yannick Pontal would finish the day in ninth, more than enough to reward him with the overall title, having ridden superbly all year. I mean, I'm pretty uh, disappointing about the race today because uh, I think I was a little bit stressed, you know, for, about the ranking and the overall. Uh, so it was not my uh, my best riding, but uh, uh, yes, for the overall now it's good. So pretty happy for that. Flo Espinera won the final stage to take her much coveted debut victory and the perfect way to cement her EWSE overall winner's title. I couldn't be more perfect to me to finish this rookie season with a win on the race, a win in the overall of e-bike and pretty good results on the normal bike. Here are the final results then of the EWSE Finale Ligari 2022. Flo Espinera takes the win to secure the title by 19 and a half seconds from Hattie Harnden. Tracy Mosley was third, exemplifying that there's no replacement for experience and lots and lots of speed. Wiedenrott was fourth ahead of a hugely impressive fifth for Katie Winton. Winner of round two, Alia Marcellini had a disappointing home race in tenth. Adrian Day seals his return to the top step, where better to do it than in Finale Ligari. Tiago Ladeira pulls off one of the late race moves off the century to claim second ahead of Yeti Shimano EP Racing's Richie Rood. Mikel squeaks home ahead of Garibo and the title winner Yannick Pontal finishes in ninth ahead of Josh Carlson in tenth. Orbea Fox Enduro team's Flo Espinera then takes the title ahead of Sevilla Fiedenrot who finishes in second and Alia Marcellini in third. Tracy Mosley finishes fifth just ahead of Hattie Harnden. In the pro men's then it is Yannick Pontal's title just ahead of an extremely impressive 2022 for Andrea Garibu. And the winner of round one, Edgar Carballo Gonzalez, is third. Tiago Ladeira ends up fourth after a stellar final round just ahead of Lee Johnson. Orbea Fox Enduro team took the win in the team's championship ahead of Miranda Factory team and Pole Enduro race team. And that is it for the EWSE Championship in 2022. E-bike racing continues to gather pace and be pushed to new, ever more exciting speeds by the best racers in the world. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.